The Ghorepani Poon Hill Trek is a four to five day hike in the Annapurna mountain range in Nepal. It takes a moderate level of fitness to complete and the maximum elevation is approximately 3,200 meters. There were several factors we considered important when planning for this trek, which we'll be sharing in this video. The first important thing was hiring a guide. It is possible to trek this route without a guide. The trail is well maintained and not hard to follow, though one may have to ask for directions at places. There are several good eating and staying options en route. For us, four former college batchmates traveling internationally together for the first time, going with a guide made more sense and it was worth the extra cost. We had considered booking a tour with an agency but finally decided to go with Tulasi, a freelance guide we found via the internet and I'm glad we did. Apart from taking care of our travel insurance, we were able to leave all other arrangements on the trek up to him. And second night, we have to go until in Bontanti, all of the steeper. Mm -hmm. And after Bontanti, we have to enter the, all of the forest area. That's all of the forest. Mm -hmm. Tulasi arranged our trek permits, private jeep transport to and from Pokhara, hired two porters, arranged for comfortable accommodation with attached bathrooms and hot showers and tasty meals. He explained the trek route and options beforehand and agreed on a flexible itinerary to suit our needs. We will see how we feel. If we feel tired, we can take lunch in the Nanga mm -hmm. Otherwise, we can go in Yeah. We can, we can also do the, like Tadapani and Ghandru and Pohara. We can do five days also. Mostly people, they want the five days. But with the CCC, it's just four days. So we can do like in Tadapani and from Tadapani to... He was attentive, well informed, with a good sense of humor an essential quality when things don't go according to plan and you have to make the best of the situation. As an added bonus, being an avid bird watcher, he pointed out several interesting birds along the way. The next point was what to pack. As we had two porters and Tulisi had recommended handing a backpack weighing not more than 15 kilograms to each, we finally ended up with two packs weighing approximately 11 to 12 kg each, so roughly 6 kg per person, apart from our day packs. We stored most of our luggage at our hotel and only carried what we considered trekking essentials, which included clothes, lightweight, quick drying, could be layered, shoes, broken in, waterproof hiking shoes are ideal, though this trek can be accomplished even in walking shoes, socks, hat, sunglasses, trekking poles, optional, they can be rented in Pokhara, a jacket, either fleece or down, it gets cold higher up even in summers. A rain poncho and waterproof backpack cover. A sleeping bag liner or lightweight extra layer can be placed beneath the quilt or blanket provided at the guest house. We had thin fleece blankets and pashmina shawls. We also carried slippers or flip flops to wear at the guest house. We had quick drying towels, the usual toiletries, including lots of tissue paper and wet wipes lip balm, sunscreen with SPF more than 40, safety pins, needle and thread, medical kit, snacks, all of these we carried with us. Now, a very important point regarding your camera. Take as many extra batteries or battery packs as you can manage. Though most guest houses allow free charging, a few do not have sockets in the rooms. You need to sit in common areas while charging and there are frequent power cuts. At some places, you have to pay for charging each device and sit in the dining hall while doing so. Regarding mobile phones, international roaming packages work in most areas. Where local SIMs are concerned, NCEL coverage is poor, especially in the area of this trek. Namaste is better, but it is more difficult to get. In our day packs, we carried a water bottle, sunglasses, sunscreen, hat, phone, camera, cash, battery pack, snacks, light jacket as we traveled higher, hand wash, wet wipes, TP. Since I like taking a few sips of water at frequent intervals, I find it more convenient to have a separate sling for my water bottle. By the same logic, I like to carry a lightweight sling purse with my phone, camera, sunglasses and cash on the other shoulder. It looks cumbersome, but it's very convenient for me. For climbing up Poon Hill specifically, we carried a headlamp or torch, extra warm clothes or layers, gloves to keep our hands warm for taking photos. The third important point to remember concerns drinking water. During the trek, buying water bottles is more expensive and adds to waste. It is important to carry your own bottles and refill at a cost of 100 Nepali rupees for one litre. Dal bath. 
Rice with dal, vegetables and chutney is the staple food. Healthy, nutritious, but it can get monotonous after a while. Other options include noodles, spaghetti, bread, jam, eggs, fried rice, etc. Tea, coffee, black or with milk, hot chocolate, juices, coke and other aerated drinks are freely available. It's called a tea house trek for a reason. Tulasi arranged for our stay in comfortable guest houses with clean sheets, warm quilts and attached bathrooms with running hot water. Even while trekking, there are several places one can take a break for drinks or meals, all with clean toilets. You do need to carry your own teepee though. The best times for the trek would probably be when there is little or no rain or snow. That is March to May and September to November. The temperatures are moderate and the weather is clearer. We went end March and it was wonderful to see the rhododendron flowers in full bloom. We did have rain and hail, but that is a chance one has to take. Our seventh point for discussion involves the trail itself, which consists of steps, steps and more steps, interspersed with a few stretches of Nepali flats. A moderate level of fitness is required for this trek and the downhill steps are punishing on the knees and ankles, so be prepared. Tulasi recommends daily running for at least one hour starting at least one week before the planned trek. The toughest day that we had to get through was actually day three, Ghorepani to Ghandro. I shall explain further in a subsequent video, but for now I would just mention that from our experience, we would recommend finishing day three at Tadapani and travelling to Ghandruk on day four, a much more enjoyable experience.